Trevor, do you have an idea? Because you brought this up, and it was a very good idea. I was going to bring it up. Well, I think if the, um, I mean, you really have to first. You have to look at all the where all the assets are. So there would have, have to be an asset, you know, ma mapping, map, mapping of the region, and look where the look where the strengths are and the weaknesses are. That's wh that's what I think, and I hope when we're doing our master plan, I'm hoping that's what we're going to be doing. So, you know, that's that's. But we're only step. one county, and we need to get other counties doing the same. I, and I guess I'm saying that from the from Broward, we'll be mapping what we have, and then looking at what our neighboring counties have, and and see where and and. At some point, we may make you know put out you know o o offers or overtures. Where are, are there are there is there room here for reciprocity? Um, I'll be going straight to Palm Beach. So. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we tried to do a SFRPC tour of the Palm Beach facility, but we were advised this would violate sunshine, so we didn't. Um, as I said, I'm going up in about uh, on October. 31st, which I think is around 11 days. Mm -hmm. So any other comments on this before I turn it over to everybody for our final comments? But any just other comments on cooperation? Uh, just to follow up on and what please Commissioner- please tell us your name again when you start to speak. Just to follow up on what Commissioner Fur said. There's, uh, <laughs> We're not. <laughs> there's a lot to be learned from our neighbors. And everybody has a piece of the puzzle. Some people do it a little better than others. And we can learn a lot from our neighbors, and we can learn a lot from other experts that aren't here, and we need to do all of those things. Uh, a little bit of follow up. Larry Leet, St. Lucie County Commission. Thank you. <laughs> Still, uh, a little bit of follow up on the regional collaboration. Uh, our county was majority citrus, and we all know where citrus is at. Uh, we, St. Lucie County, now are the largest solar panel farm out there and it's because of our growers needing income on their property. Um, we are now seeing more, we've got two of the um, compost uh, people coming in and making dirt. Bottom line, we have the land and we have the people. I, you could probably find to sell you the land to put the composting on and we are definitely willing to work with other counties as far as uh, anything recyclable or getting the plants in. So please talk to us. Next. Okay, everybody knows who I am, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's all cite in unison. No, um, I think as what we've learned from the South Florida Regional Climate Change Compact and the, the loud voice that it has had, not just in Florida, but in Washington also, I think regionally doing things together for the betterment of the whole South Florida area, I think um, is, could be very impactful. And I think we all need to work together to you know, have one voice and one message to s Tallahassee, to DC, to get things done the way we think we it should be. Mayor Ross? And, and, I, and to follow that up, after the analysis, as Commissioner Furr indicated, that we're going to do, I think the analysis has been done for all these counties here today. Then we communicate with each other, we collaborate, and we cooperate. That's the only way we're going to get anything done here. And yeah, one more thing is St. Lucie County, we have I-95 and, and the Turnpike one quarter of a mile from each other. And speaking with waste management, they are in the process of talking with, I believe, FEC to start railroading some of the garbage into different facilities, which is a great idea when you start thinking about the tear on the roads and the weight of the trucks and so on and so forth. So if we could get the collaboration with the railroads and the counties, it's all there. Anyone else uh, on this it, topic? It might turn into the garbage. I don't think it's going to make it. Okay. If there's nothing else on this topic, um, again, our goal is to end at 4 instead of 4.15. So let me at this point ask if any of the elected officials, why don't we start at that end and work down, if any of you have any closing comments for on what you've heard today or any other comments? Thank you. Um, yeah, this has been a great day. Um, time very well spent. I've learned a lot. I feel like we all have um, our issues in our municipalities and our counties, but we've all learned a lot here today. I know I have. I have lots of copious notes to um, go back and do some research. Um, but I thank you for everyone that took the time to put this together and organize it. And um, I appreciate all of you out there for all that you do every day. 
again, uh, thank you for the information today. Thank you for putting this together. And I learned that I need to start looking at Palm Beach County a little bit harder <laughs> to find out how they're doing it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to all the, sta the staff, both staff. They put their, this was excellent. You pulled in some really good people that I don't think a lot of us have had a chance to, re to hear from. A lot of the stats that we saw, a lot of the, the, the graphs, all those things, things that I hadn't seen. So I, I really appreciate it. I, I got a lot out of it. Thank you. Yeah, there was a lot of information that came around today, and I'm, I'm deeply appreciative for all of it and for everything that was done to put this thing together. And uh, I'm looking forward to building this enterprise and to getting involved with it. And uh, again, thanks to everybody who contributed here. Anthony Caggiano, this is an important topic. This is an important event. It's important that we start working together instead of at cross purposes or just overlapping. It's all about the future, folks. It's all about what are we going to leave the people who come after us and can we look in the mirror and say we actually did the best for them. And I'm thrilled to be here today to be part of this. As part of the South Florida Regional Planning Council, I've got to say very proud of what you've done today, bringing everyone together, showing me how much I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned so much in, in, in regards to that and, and looking forward to depending on each and every one of you here that I can give a phone call to. I've done it with Ken, and, I've, and if you have not taken the tour, do yourselves a favor, take the tour with Ken. <laughs> because you will be thoroughly impressed as I was. Uh, you've got a great thing going, keep it up. And I thank everyone here. Thank you, Denise Horland, City of Plant Beach. Um, I wanna echo everything that everyone said up here today. I, again, also took copious notes. I think there was so much great information. I think my public works director may have left because he knows I'm gonna call him next week uh, with some ideas. Um, but no, it's, it's been terrific and I'm excited. One of the things that I want to see more of is those industries that are out there that we don't know about that are creating the opportunities. We've talked a lot about creating a circular economy. We talked about it today. There were some great ideas, but there's so much more out there. And I know others have brought up the glass. That's one of my big things. Um, I, think, I think North Carolina has created a whole industry around the recycled glass that they're capturing. So I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. And again, I want to thank everyone. It was really a terrific day. So thank you for your efforts in putting this together. And I apologize, I said, Ken, it's Dan. I don't know what, I have a friend, Pellowitz, who's Ken Pel So my apologies, it's Dan. <laughs> well, Dan's gonna have to hire like a tour guide because we all have to go separately. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to echo the gratitude and appreciation um, to Isabel and everybody else that put it. It was really very helpful. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, I'm very curious about Miami-Dade and um, the old energy output versus what you're expecting and your new energy output. Um, you know, there's a lot of pushback that I hear about the technology, so I'm curious uh, what, what it looks like today versus what was previously um, in place. So I think just my big takeaway is we have so many experts here and so many people that have been through something or another and that will learn a lot from each other. So thanks again. I'll close for this part by just saying Wow, this was very complicated. I got your moment. This, we're not done yet, um, th this panel. Um, and just saying this was extremely complicated. I think we've all, no matter how much we knew, learned some new things today and we're going to continue. So let me tell you what we're going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon before we're done, which I'm hoping will be about 10 minutes. Uh, first, we're going to call on Commissioner Albritton, because he had his hand up from Southwest Ranches. Then we're going to take any public comment, if there is any. Then I'm going to ask Tom Lanahan and Isabel Cosio, our, the executive directors, for any closing remarks they have. And then we're adjourned. So we will finish considerably earlier than the 4.15 that we had planned. So let me now. Commissioner Albritton, by the way, one of my constituents. Thank you, Stan, uh, Senator. Uh, Jim Albritton again, Southwest Ranches. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that put this on, to all the staff members, and I'd like to say thank you to all those that got up there and spoke, all the uh, experts. 
and for everyone that stayed and listened. Real quickly, uh, the uh, Zero Waste USA is putting on a Zoom meeting on November the 8th. I attended this class probably a month or so ago. This is a worldwide Zoom meeting, and they tell you in other countries exactly what they've done to eliminate waste and to recycle and to refurbish. If you get a chance to go on zero waste and look it up, it's still time to register. I think this would be a great follow-up if any of you would like to, to do it. If you don't know what to do, come see me and I'll help you with this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council Member. Um, is there any public comment? The public comment period is now open. So, Joanna. Hi, thank you. I'm Joanna Behrens. Um, I'm a layperson. I'm an event planner by profession, and I am uh, immediate past president of the Sustainable Events Network, Florida and Caribbean. We champion sustainable practices in the events industry. I also sit on the Hollywood Sustainability Advisory Committee, and I'm on Elaine Fiore's Committee for Food Waste Prevention Week since its inception, along with Dan Miroff and whoever else is in this room that I missed. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to, I just wrote down a couple of notes to make sure I'm understanding correctly. I want to reemphasize our need for source reduction, <coughs> reduction in our consumption. This has been touched on, so I think you guys have a great opportunity within your communities to emphasize that. I'm gleaning that participation in recycling in communities is not compulsory. Am I correct? We, no one is mandated in their community. So therefore, I'm wondering if incentives for participation, which I have brought up on our very municipal level, would be something that could be explored as you guys are looking at this on a much bigger uh, level and a more cohesive level so that people are rewarded for participating in this and complying. They may get discounts off their uh, bills. It's just a suggestion and a thought. I've been dismayed to learn that there are buildings within Hollywood that don't have recycling at all. I don't understand that, but that's another subject for another day. I did want to champion composting. Um, I have worked specifically in the Zero Food Waste Initiative within the events industry for seven and a half years. That's my passion. Um, there's a lot of waste that goes on within that industry. And so we advocate for source reduction on the front end in the planning and then donation to local charities when food is not consumed at these events. We've also been seeing composting starting to enter the events industry. Dustin is uh, one of the partners on this. And I wanted to emphasize that event food waste within this community in the state of Florida, because while agriculture may be the number one industry, tourism's number two, or vice versa, I may have it wrong. So don't underestimate the economic power of what the events and festivals industry does to our economy. We are championing these sustainable practices. We are championing that the venues selected by people like me who choose venues for their clients pick venues that are incorporating sustainable practices into their operations, are using anaerobic digesters, possibly participating in composting, willing to participate in food donation. So that's an avenue that you guys can pursue. Um, we're pleased to partner with a number of festivals that come right here to South Florida. One that comes to mind that has made strides with the composting is the Tortuga Music Festival. So I just wanted to emphasize that there's great opportunities there to take this to the next level and the next level. And Carol, you should speak on what we did in the city of Hollywood. <laughs> I, I just mentioned to, you, Joanna. Yes. to Joanna earlier in Hollywood, uh, anybody that wants to rent a, a city facility, a park, or a, you know, an overhang in our park or something like that, they have always had to sign a contract, and we added a provision to that contract, not mandatory, but encouraging and forcefully encouraging that any food waste from their event be donated or otherwise um, you know, not, not put into our trash cycle. Sir? And please start by identifying yourself. Will do. Good afternoon. My name is Dustin DuBois. Um, 
I am a general contractor, but I'm also on the side the owner of a food waste recycling company called Filthy Organics. We're based here out of Broward. And I uh, wanted to thank you guys for taking the time today with everything you've discussed. It's, uh, it's a very different conversation than was had last year. Uh, there was very little, if any, discussion about composting last year. Um, and I'm hearing it over and over and over again. And it's, it's wonderful. Um, in the spirit of education, just wanted to, to clarify that the compost industry does exist. It, it does have capacity to expand locally um, on a national level. It's a, it's a huge industry. So it's not just backyard people doing their food waste. Um, and then just, again, kind of on the education piece with the city of Deerfield, we, uh, we partnered with them for a USDA grant. The program officially kicks off next week. Um, but they're covering the cost of 100 residential subscribers and five new businesses that we're collecting food waste from um, and composting. So if you want to see how, you know, the, the system works, uh, it, it should be front and center for you guys. And, um, yeah, I guess just one other thing, just so you understand that, you know, your, your residents, your constituents, they want to see this happen. Outside of this program, uh, I, think it's, I think it's pretty powerful to, to note that, People are willing to pay us, on top of everything they're already paying you guys for their MSW, uh, to come and collect their food waste and compost it. That's how badly they want to do the right thing. So that's all I got. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you. Let, let me point out one thing. This is not the same program we did last year. Last year we had the two SFRPC, TCRPC, which was focused on how to deal with solid waste. This one is specifically recycling next year could be on one of them, could be on housing, could be on traffic. Every year, the SFRPC and the TCRPC are going to do a major conference together. I believe that's what our plans are. But the topic will, will be different each year. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Are th is there any other public comment? Okay, can I see all of the public comment? I see one, two, three. Anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry? Is there someone at the back? Four. Okay. So, number one, number, wh who is two? The number two, number three, number four. Is there anyone else besides those four? If not, I'm going to call on those four, and then we will end our public comment period. You're recognized, ma'am. Hi there. This is Morgan Shad, FWC. Just based off of my background, I'm a biologist. Um, so, just question because I this is my first time hearing about the food waste composting and whatnot um, just something to keep in mind before implementing one of these programs is maybe just think of how wildlife nuisance animals might be an issue um, going into just going forward because um, I, I would want this program to be successful and I wouldn't want there to be negative things associated with oh there's raccoons they're doing whatever who knows so just keep that in mind. Thank you. Number two, please identify yourself. Uh, can, is your mic on? Debbie Green, resident Southwest Ranches. Um, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for this event. It was a lot of great information. Um, and then it's an it's exciting time for this new Solid Waste Authority of Broward County. And I just hope and ask that everybody keep open minds and not look to what was in the past and research and other findings from the past and look towards the future and what is the in the best um, interest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I get nervous. The best interest of everyone all you know humans animals our environment the you know everything going forward um and i just you know there's it keeps being brought up there's only there's such a limited amount of land and one of the comment that was made was in looking at this recycling and this this you know solid waste pr issue is how to protect the environment and public health so I think you also need to take into consideration just because there's a piece of land doesn't mean that it is the right place for whether it's a waste of energy or depending on whatever that facility is. If it's a piece of land that's adjacent to a town that relies solely on the groundwater for their potable water, 
that's not in the best interest of the environment or public health of that community. There's many, there's, if it needs to go, maybe the, the place for it's a facility like that is an area where there's already the contamination of the groundwater, whether it's the seawater intrusion or it's just already contaminated, not an area that has clean water that supplies to many surrounding cities. So I just ask that you all just please keep open minds and look to all the different um, methods of recycling, whether it's zero waste methods or, I mean, there was several um, things that were shared with today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Solid Waste Director for Miami-Dade. I speak loud anyways, but uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Isa for including me in this fabulous event. I, even I learned a lot today, so I'm grateful that I was a part of it. But actually, I have a question, and I don't know if he's still here. The gentleman that was on the panel with me or, or even um, Commissioner asked you, when we talked about the carts, that people who are not recycling right, you take away the carts, is those folks, do they not then have to pay for the recycling fee? Because the question is that the legality of can we take away a cart when they're paying for the service? Because I'd love to take away the cart too, but I was <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I'm not sure how legal a it is. As a lawyer, so I think we could we can check with our county attorneys. But if somebody's violating the laws or rules or, or regulations, they, I think that they can still be required. Um, Sam, I know you would never want to render an opinion without doing research, <laughs> or but do either of you have an off the cuff? No, they're too smart. They are too smart to give an opinion <laughs> off the cuff like I did. Um, <laughs> and our last public speaker at the back of the room. Yes, uh, Anthony Bonna. I'm actually with the city of Port St. Lucie, Treasure Coast Regional Planning. I'm down here mostly for space issues, but I do have some comment. Um, and, and my first comment is to thank everyone, as, as others have, for organizing this event today. Um, I definitely learned a lot about the challenges that we face. I was encouraged by uh, the discussion about collaboration and uh, inspired by some of the innovation that's going on. I think even with all of that, the, the largest issue here, um, and it's been said time and time again, is education. Uh, but I don't like to refer it that way because, and this goes for any issue I deal with in government, I believe the largest issue is communication. You know, we opened this up with several of the myths and it was brought up maybe this is a political issue. I don't think it's largely a political issue. There is broad support in both parties for preserving our environment. And I think at a large issue, a lot of this is those myths that persist. Um, if people don't believe recycling is effective, if they think that, if they don't believe it's cost effective um, in some of those earlier myths, they're not going to do it if they don't believe it's making a difference. And so it's our responsibility to communicate. Um, and I believe communication is a much better word because communication implies conversation. It doesn't imply that we're coming in, we know best, and, and, and we're telling you um, what you need to do. Um, and we need, to have, we need to have a broader conversation with our constituents. We need to give them a little bit more credit um, than, than, you know, saying that they don't believe in, in the truth or they don't, you know, they don't believe that um, they need to recycle. It's, it's, it's obvious that there, is, that there are certain myths out there, certain perceptions, because, frankly, science changed over time. I mean, Commissioner Elite uh, from my county talked about how science was different when he was growing up. And, uh, and when the science changes, it's our responsibility to communicate that. And I think that's the largest issue in this uh, and the largest challenge that we face. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The public comment period is now closed. And um, before everybody gets up, we're going to hear from, if they want to say anything, our two executive directors. I will make 30 seconds worth of closing comments, thanking people, and then we are adjourned. Uh, Tom Lanahan, the Executive Director of the uh, Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council. Um, thank you, and uh, thank you for everybody for being here, and certainly thank you, uh, Isabel and, and uh, um, Aralda and your staff for putting this uh, 
the prime prime movers on this, um, and and my staff as well for uh, for the assistance that um, they provided in putting this together. Um, unfortunately, my um, uh, my chairman's wife had a um, uh, little accident uh, uh, today, uh, and and uh, um, he needed to leave. Um, uh, he was very engaged on this issue and and had um, a lot that he wanted to say um, at the end. Um, and I'll, I'll just share with you that. Um, the um, single-use plastics is something that um, he is uh, extraordinarily concerned about, and the um, the the impact, as was mentioned, of uh, you know the, uh, the 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 plastics going to the water, and then the fish eat them, and then we eat the fish. Um, that is, you know, uh, actually it's going to be sent out to everybody. But um, there's a study out showing that this is this is really happening, um, and in the in Indian River Lagoon alone, you know. Uh, trillions of pieces of microplastic are, are in the in the waters there, and um, you know we can't continue to live like this. So um, we've got to do better. And I think um, today is a great um, piece of that conversation. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is, you know, the last time that we met uh, a year ago on the solid waste issue, um, the uh, Broward's efforts to uh, address this problem jointly across the county and form a solid waste authority and the rest of that. Um, was kind of being worked on, but wasn't, you know, uh, there was, you know, there were some folks were confident, but maybe other folks weren't that it could actually happen. And so um, kudos to you all for, um, uh, for doing that, you know, being able to work together uh, and also recognizing this is an historic opportunity for, uh, for your communities. And I, I think very proud to have um, the folks from Palm Beach <laughs> County here um, because it, it really does demonstrate how working together you can do great things. Um, because if we were 39 municipalities plus the unincorporated county going in 39 plus one, 40 different directions on, on solid waste, <laughs> it would be a complete disaster. So um, anyway, uh, uh, thank you for every, uh, everybody for being here and I'll, I'll let Isabel wrap it up. Isabel Cosio, the executive director of the South Florida Regional Planning Council. Thank you, and I'm trying and to get you up when you're five done, minutes I will, early. <laughs> when you're, oh, no, no, we're so. not due to be done until 4.15, so. Oh, okay. But we will be done. After Isabel is done, I will thank people for That's one great. minute or less, and then we're adjourned. That's good, so the pressure is on for me. So, um, I will, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here. I really do. On behalf of council staff, we worked very hard to put this together. I hope that you found it worth your time. I want to thank also our sponsors who were generous and stepped up and made it possible for us to underwrite this and also the councils to underwrite this so you all could attend free of charge. The, only, the charge is your time, but it is a, is a lot. Um, I also want to just really say this is our second year having a conversation about this year specifically recycling but also related to solid waste. And we could not do it without the volunteers. And then when I say the volunteers are the public servants that work at DEP, at all the counties. Um, Ramana was incredible, suggestions, the private sector partners that came. All these folks made this possible because yes, it's a one day event, but we've been working on putting this together for months. And so I'm just very, very grateful because it wouldn't happen without all of you. I want to also take a minute and thank 